Hey, what's up, Marauders? Today we're going to be doing the Hydrate Lab. Uh, it's my favorite lab, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, today we're going to be looking at copper sulfate hydrate. So this is copper sulfate hydrate. It's this blue crystal. It's an ionic uh, compound, copper sulfate. And it's a hydrate, which means that there's water molecules trapped inside of it. And our goal in the lab today is to figure out how many water molecules are trapped inside. What's the ratio between copper sulfate and water? Uh, so to do this, we're going to first take a crucible. So this is an empty crucible. A crucible is a container that can withstand pretty high temperatures. And we're going to uh, find its mass. So this is the mass of the empty, clean, dry crucible. So we'll record that in your data table. And then we'll take a sample of the copper sulfate hydrate. And so it looks dry, it feels dry, but there's actually water trapped inside of this. Uh, one of the cool things about copper sulfate hydrate is that it has this bright blue color when it's in the hydrate form, when there's that, those water molecules trapped inside of it, and it will actually turn a different color. It'll turn kind of a whitish gray color uh, once those water molecules have been removed. All right, so we've got this on the balance. You can record the initial mass of the hydrate and the crucible. You can, of course, subtract out the mass of the empty crucible to find the mass of just our hydrate. And so the way we're going to remove the water from this hydrate is by heating it. Uh, we're going to heat it on a Bunsen burner. So I've got a Bunsen burner set up with a ring stand and a clay triangle. And we will light our Bunsen burner. And we'll heat our, heat our crucible with the hydrate in it. And as it's heated, the water will be evaporating out and we'll be left, left with just the copper sulfate. Uh, so at the beginning, it was copper sulfate and water. We're going to evaporate out all the water, so it's just copper sulfate. We'll weigh it again at the end, uh, and we'll be able to figure out how much water evaporated, and then we can figure out the ratio between copper sulfate and water molecules. So we've been heating this for a couple minutes now, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, some of the blue color, some of that bright blue color has gone away. You can see it's kind of whitish gray around the outside. Uh, we're going to continue heating it until it's all that whitish gray color. So I'll put it back on the Bunsen burner, and I will occasionally stir it, and we'll continue heating it until all that bright blue color has gone away. All right, so we've been heating it for about three or four minutes now, and I think it's probably heated enough. Uh, if we look at the color now, you can see it's not that bright blue, but it's now kind of like a dull gray, almost, uh, almost white color. So I'm going to set it down here and let it cool. We don't want to put hot things on our balance, so we're going to let that cool for a few minutes. And then once it's cool enough that I can touch it, I'll put it on the balance and we'll find its final mass. All right, so our copper sulfate's been cooling for a few minutes. Uh, it's now cool enough that I can touch it, and now I can set it on the balance to find our final mass. And so this is the mass after it's been heated, so all of the water has been evaporated out. Uh, we're actually going to heat it a second time to confirm that all the water has been heated out. Uh, if it doesn't continue to get lighter, then we know that all the water has been removed. So we'll get our mass after it's been heated. Uh, that's the mass of just the copper sulfate and, of course, the empty crucible. We'll heat it again and see if it gets any lighter the sec after the second heating. So I'll relight my Bunsen burner. And I will set it up on the ring stand again. And we'll heat it and stir it one more time, let it cool, and we'll weigh it one more time just to confirm that we got all the water out of it. All right, so we've been waiting. Uh, we heated this a second time, and we took it off and let it cool. So it's been heated twice. Uh, you can look at it again. You can see that pretty much all that blue color is gone. It's like a, a fine white gray powder. Uh, and so we're going to weigh it again and find the final mass. And so here's our final mass. Notice that between the first and second time we heated it, it did lose a little bit more weight. Uh, that means during our first heating, we didn't drive all the water out of it. And so it was actually necessary to heat it that second time to make sure that we got all the water out of it. Um, so this is the number that you're actually going to use for your calculations. You don't want to use that, uh, the mass after the first heating. You want to use it after the final heating. We could actually go and do it again if we weren't sure, but based on its color, um, I'm pretty sure that we got all the water out of it. So I'm gonna stop there and, uh, and use that as your final mass. So now the calculations you need to do, you know the mass of the hydrate at the beginning, uh, you know the mass of the anhydrous salt at the end, that's anhydrous salt is just the copper sulfate without any water in it. Uh, and then you can subtract, take the difference between those to see how much water was lost. 
Uh, and then once you know how much water there was and how much anhydrous salt there is, you can find the ratio, the mole ratio between those two things and find the formula of the hydrate. Uh, there's one last thing I'm going to do, and that is to add water back to the hydrate. And so you can see it's that, that white gray powdery color, and I'm going to add some water back to it. Let's see if you can see this. And when we add the water back to it, you see that it turns back to that bright blue color that we had initially. Uh, so it's a reversible reaction. The other thing that I'm noticing right now is that this is actually getting warm. So it took heat to drive the water out. That was an endothermic reaction. And now when I'm putting back water in, the opposite reaction is actually exothermic. So the crucible is actually getting warm uh, as that anhydrous salt takes in that water again, it uh, gives off heat and it's a reversible reaction. We could go back and forth, we could heat this again and drive the water out, we could add the water back in and uh, we could do that multiple times. So that's it, uh, good luck on the rest of the lab.